Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered! Uh, today, gonna be Light versus Soul Key here on Tripod. Got this replay from RJB topside. Gonna be our White Zerg, it is Soul Key. Under his well known Smurf name, Bucktube. And on the right side, it is Light. Under his not Smurf name, Light. Speaking Korean to each other in the early game here. A lot of available APM in the early game of StarCraft, that is for sure. So Tripod is a three-player map, as you probably could tell by the name. Woof! A lot of side disruptors, man. A lot of side disruptors. I've cast a game on this map before. The middle base is super, super weird. Got an expansion here, we've got an expansion here. And you have to mine through these mineral fields, which isn't too hard. Or destroy the side disruptor, which is not too hard as well. Huh. <laughs> Just eggs everywhere. Side disruptors all over the place. Woo. Expansions up on the high ground with wide ramps leading up to them. Hmm. I kind of feel like this is a, a Zerg favored map. But we'll have to see. Man, they are chatty Cathy's. What are you talking about? The weather? Maybe the last game that they played against each other? I don't know. <laughs> this, uh, hmm. Is that just eyes looking out? Maybe a shocked emoji? <laughs> From Soul Key? Maybe. Maybe it is. Anyway, what are we doing here? Well, definitely hatch first timing from Soul Key. Big three-player map. Kind of hard to scout out. And then definitely really walling off here is light. Like, worried about early pool stuff from Soul Key for sure. We'll see if that's necessary or not. If you like both these players, I did cast a best of five between these two back in November of 2021. So this last November. If you want to link to it, let me know. I'll put it in the description. I'll respond to your comment directly. We're putting it to you that way. Uh, it's just a really, really good best of five between the two players. Some excellent play on both sides. And I don't think you'll be disappointed by it. Light, maybe the best Terran player in the world. Right now, the Flash has kind of disappeared, but I don't know. So, wow. Is that a three hatch before pool? That was a third hatch before pool. Dude, okay. And this is just regular barracks timing. Oh, nothing's being produced from the barracks. He's going right into factory. <gasps> if your opponent's going mech, you know what? They have some time before they get ramped up in mech. Not like they can just have 10 marines out in the first four minutes and come ruin you. I like this. This is Soul Key taking a gamble, saying Light likes opening mech these days. He's very good with it, very strong with it. A little bit harder maybe to transition into mech than it used to be against Zergs, who know it's coming and are better at scouting for it. So, you know, if he's going to open mech on me, I'm going to get a third hatch before my pool. I'm going to just overwhelm him. Overwhelm his face with so much Zergy stuff. Mass Muta? Maybe. Maybe so. Oh, two port follow up. <sighs> One gate into two port. When everyone else was like, he's going mech, that's a lie. Dude, RJB does not send me dumb replays. This is so weird. I love it. I love the two port. I mean, we don't, it's not weird. We do see it sometimes, but it's not, I mean, it's not standard. Go open up two port here in a game like this between these two players is not normal at all. He's floating the barracks. Now here's the problem is that our guy soul key is going for a fast lair, which means probably a fast spire, which means we're going to get scourge. We're going to get mutalisks out, which are very good against wraiths. And maybe even some devourers if we get in, if we eventually get into that tech at all. But honestly, like a spore at every base, just a pack of mutalisks out is going to be fine. This really just feels like mutalisks all the live long day. There is even a third geyser here. This isn't even like a third base that sucks where a Zerg player takes a third, but it's only minerals. And they're like, man, I wish there was gas here. But no, that's not what it is at all. There's a third refinery. And this one base play from light is just like, well, it's wraiths, I guess. He made a marine in case some zerglings show up, I guess. But there are no zerglings at. Okay, there are some zerglings out because they're chasing this SCV around. They're really trying to kill it, but they don't have speed because we didn't give you metabolic boost. We simply chose to not give you metabolic boost. 
Because, well, we wanted the gas for Alaire instead. And we wanted a gas for the... Well, yeah. Evolution chamber. Well, that's not gas. But the spire, yeah. And there we go. We're getting spore up in the main base. A spore up in this third base. There we go. And the wraiths have arrived. They're going to get a free overlord for sure. And that's... Ooh, two overlords. The supply block is real already. Like, this isn't game-winning stuff by any stretch, but it's pretty good. Spore finish. Wait, where did the wreaths go? Here they are. Yeah, so here's the thing. Paper mache. Any damage they take at all, any hits they take at all, taking a big chunk of their HP. So they're only taking hits from anything. This is light micro, though. And he's just going to pick off drones, force the drones to only mine from these three mineral patches instead of the other four. This is nuts. I like it. I like the aggression. I've died to this before. It wasn't light, but, you know, it sure felt like it was. <laughs> the wraiths thinking about it thinking about it like oh can we kill the spire yeah in 800 years we can kill the spire actually that's not true it's already down to 500 hp that was a lie hmm so cloak coming in muta's on the way there's only three of them though he doesn't have the two gas i figured if he was going for a wraith oh i guess he does have the two gas here there but not a ton of gas in the bank wow never mind wraith attacks better than expected but he does end up saving the Spire because Scourge are out. Now they're going to chase these Wraiths out. What the what micro do they have? I don't know. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Snipe and Scourge from distance. Beautiful. But also taking hits here from these Mutas. Oh, a lot of these are injured. They should probably not go back in. Look how They're all very injured. Look at that. Look how injured they are. Okay. So, Sulky weathers the incoming storm. His supply block to bed. He doesn't lose his Spire thanks to the timing on those Scourge. The cloak's on the way, but, like, I don't know, man. There's a spore up at every one of these bases. Well, there's almost a spore up at every one of these bases, so cloak's not going to do a whole lot. Maybe for base defense, right? If the mutas try to harass you, you can snipe the overlord, and if there's only one, that's easy, and then the mutas are at your mercy. Second base, done, landed, gas being taken here by light, and, yeah. I mean, once you float your factory like that, it's just, it's just Wraith. He's repairing his boys. I love that. You don't see that all in StarCraft, is repairing on the Wraiths. A lot of mutas, though. Look, that, that's what happens. When you have three bases this fast, you have three refineries you're mining from, three geysers you're mining from with your extractors. It's going to be a good time. I think he's waiting for overlord speed. Yeah, he needs overlord speed to get the overlords over here faster. So the mutas, when the mutas attack... I'm just donating some links to the... I didn't see any information here at all. Uh, there's a barracks and a bunker. Neat. But yeah, he needs the overlords because he's like, look, nobody makes this many rates unless they're also going for cloaks. So let's do that. He's entirely in the dark, too. He does not know what's going on except for this wraith harass. But it tells him a lot anyway. More drones going down. Three of them picked off there in quick succession. And then when the mutas show up, the wraiths just back out. They're fast. They're fast boys. They say Wraith awaiting launch orders. Oh, we're going for ensnare. I knew it. I saw the queen and I was like, oh, ensnare. We're going to ensnare these guys because it slows them down and slows their attack speed and reveals them if they're cloaked. If your opponent is going for a ton of mutas, ensnare's good. It's a good upgrade to have, but this harassment has been pretty effective. It's only 30 drones right now to 45 total SCVs. That's probably too many. For the Terran. He needs a third base, is what I'd recommend. Scourge dead. <laughs> I like how fast moving things, especially air units, right? They get shot, and then the missiles go to where the Scourge was. The Scourge is over here, and the missiles explode, and the Scourge dies over here because it's fast, and because tracking is hard in StarCraft. This is a 1998 video game, everyone. They didn't change any, any of the underlying code for this either. This is just a new shiny skin that they did. Hive is on the way and Snare's done. Do we have any of them queens out? We do. Got a queen in the mix. Yeah, this is, my goodness, this might get a weird fun title just for the fact that our guy Light is going Mass Wraith. That's what he's making. He's Mass Wraithing it right now. I'm sure he's making an academy too. He's getting a Radiate, so Science Vessels, yes. If your opponent has casters, you probably want casters yourself. Not a bad way to look at things here. Metabolic Boost is on the way at 9 minutes. After the Hive started, the Hive's going to finish before Metabolic Boost. And then into melee attacks. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. If your opponent's going into a million Wraiths, Ultralisk's kind of incredible because Wraiths do not do a lot of damage to them. 
Ultra Ling kind of incredible too, because the Lings are not priority targets. And anytime your enemy is trying to snipe down the Ultras and allowing the Lings to chew on stuff, the Lings do a great job of it. But if it's only Lings and they're all taking hits from stuff, then they'll die pretty quickly. It's why Ultra Ling, there we go, Ultra List Cavern, is a symbiotic relationship here in StarCraft. There are a lot of those. Siege Tank and Marine is another one. Uh, Wraith and Science Vessel, sort of, I don't know. It's kind, it's pretty symbiotic. The Wraiths protect the Science Vessel from Scourge that want to murder it. And the Science Vessels radiate packs of mutas that want to kill the Wraiths. Not bad, not a bad relationship. So yeah, what's interesting here is it's only the three base from Sulky. Because he's trying to go for a fourth of 10 minutes, but that first, I mean, those first three were so fast. I kind of expected something else. He's also got the Sunkins up. He's worried about some kind of a ground attack, which there is now, which the Scourge Scout. They see there's a bunch of Marines and Medics out. Sees the Science Vessels. <laughs> Scourge kill, nothing. Adrenal's on the way, Consume's coming in. Okay, yeah, so going for Defiler tech, future-wise. Surprised these Mutas aren't being used to help kill these eggs. Like, they're not doing anything else. I mean, I know they're not good at killing eggs, but it's better. I mean, they're just, I guess they're sharking for wraiths. Ah, there's the ensnare, though. Oh, boy. And the irradiate gets tossed down, too. The wraiths take some hits. Another ensnare. What are you doing over here, queen? Run. And in oh, a parasite gets tossed down. Hey, Dead and Fest is going to be happy about this game. Parasite is actually used on a science vessel. Which, oh, science vessels are something that Terrans do not want to kill. They don't want to just sack them to get rid of the parasite. So that's a very high value, good, good target for that spell. Kindness plating on the way. More mutas coming in here too. Range upgrade for the marines. I like this tech switch from light very much. It's like, well, you're going to invest in a lot of mutas, are you? What if I just show up with 37 marines with range and plus one, plus one, and some medics on the heel? What are you going to do about that, huh? You didn't tech into Lurker Tech at all. You just made some queens instead. What a weirdo. This is a weird game, though. Might just get that weird fun tag for sure. Side Disruptor going to get knocked down. Now, are these stacked Side Disruptors? I'm going to say no. I don't remember them being stacked, and they're not. So you kill the one Side Disruptor. That's all you got to kill. Still no third base from Light is concerning. Uh, Zergling's checking, you know, down in this area to make sure no bases are being taken at Ninja-like. Stealthy like by the Terran. This seems like a pretty decent. I mean, this is really decent, right? This is the equivalent of Sulky's very easy to take third base that Light's just not interested in. Light's like, you know what? Safe third bases are not for me. Not feeling it. Restoration. Dude, it's like one weird thing happens in a game of StarCraft and it snowballs. Because there's ensnare being used. Ow. So nice irradiated on the Overlord, but the Science Vessel takes the hit. I'm assuming that was the Parasited Science Vessel, yeah? It went in there. Oh, well, now a new one's Parasited. Is he just going to sack that one too? It's got 144 energy on it. Anyway. Anyway, yeah, because Ensnare's used, and because Parasite's used, now we're getting Restoration used. Awesome. Truly, truly awesome game here. I'm looking forward to this. It's not over yet by any stretch. Ultralisks in production now. The Marines going to have a bad time with that. They got the plus one attack. They're working on plus one armor and plus two attack, which you know, is how this usually works. But the tech switch into this Marine, like this eight racks. Yeah. Eight rack science vessel stuff. It's kind of gone a little bit normal for him. Why? Why the sacrifice? Ooh, Dark Swarm. That's why. Dark Swarm makes it better. Get back in the Dark Swarm. Zergling doesn't do it. Pays for it. Pays for it. Okay. Well, Dark Swarm timing a little bit late, I would say. It's a dead... S ah! No! I think the Irradiate just took down a Scourge. That's pretty good. Yup, that one goes down. Anyway, neat. That was probably the Parasited one, if I had to guess. Ultralisk irradiated. The first of many Ultras that shall be irradiated today. Pack of Mutas don't want to engage here at all. It's too many Marines. For their liking, Dark Swarm doesn't protect them from those Marine attacks whatsoever. And just Wraiths hanging out down this way. The Lings are like, oh, okay. It's a pack of Wraiths down here. Maybe we should have some anti-air at the fifth, fourth. Like, you know, Mutas are pretty good. So the Wraiths are all dead. Well, this guy even sticks around to die. Didn't even run. Didn't even run. Distracting. The attack is really up here to the north. My misdirection has distracted you. 
<laughs> and then the Marines take down Sunken One. Sunkens don't do as well when Stim and plus two attack are done for these Marines. And there's a ton of medic support. Ultralisk comes in, target fire, Dark Swarm shows up, run! That is your run indication. Light is one of the better players on Earth at fleeing from Dark Swarms, and they're going for this eight racks scenario. And then Science Vessels, maybe a little boxer maneuver, eraser maneuver here, just irradiating random stuff. Overlords, Defiler, is that a drone? Oh, it's a Defiler, yeah, okay. And then a couple Ling Ultras get into the third base of Light, though, while that's happening. Ah! Abject Chaos is on the field right now. The Mutas are trying to just kite back and forth as much as they can. The Ultras are not as tanky, I think, as the Mutas wanted them to be. But the third base of Light is in shambles. There's no mining here happening at all. The Ultras are trying to get up this ramp, but are they too fat and chonky to get through this little gap? The answer seems to be, yeah, they think it anyway. They're bouncing around. Now, major problem, potentially the third base of Light is going to get massacred here. Big deal if Light's going to try to win this game. I mean, coming down the ramp into Ultraville, scary stuff, but they're not invincible, and they do eventually get taken down. Scourge, no. No connections there at all. I mean, the Dark Swarmling Ultra stuff is good, but the third base is gone, and Soul King needs to replace that thing, like, now. If he can, although there's still a few Marines remaining, which is a problem, reinforcing Marines cruising across the map here. The Ultras have plus two attack and plus five total armor. Working on that six armor, which just makes them a little better against these Marines. Another Parasite gets tossed down. Single Ultralisk against a group of like 25 Marines is not gonna work out. Pull back to the Dark Swarm. That's the restoration sound. Medic comes in and restores the science vessel so it's not Parasited anymore. Are you kidding right now? I don't know. It's 110 and 96 supply. Sulky's not been able to replace his third base, but he is expanding bottom left in a bit of a ninja scenario. Irradiated Ultras putting in the work against these Marines. They don't have any medic support here. So suddenly, a lot more Marines die than possibly expected. Medic's getting killed by irradiated Ultralisk radiation here. And yeah, Mutas. Try, no, try not to take radiation damage from their own stuff. Oh, science vessel down. It's 86 to 100 supply. What a scrap fest. But guess who's able to remax pretty quickly? I mean, not remax, but rebuild his army fairly quickly is our dude Light. Here he comes to save the day. Trying to get this third base back up again. There's just really nothing defending it. That's probably a canceled base if I've ever seen one before. That's too many. It's too many Marines. I got that plus two. Plus three is almost done. There's a cancel on the base. Drone retreats. Manages to live thanks to the Dark Swarm, which is very close. Irradiate on that Ultra. And I love that you just get irradiated run for some reason. Ah, oh, no. They killed the Queen. Why would you kill the Queen? Oh, boy. Well, because... Queens are bad news bears, obviously. Marine scouts this little ninja bottom left base that Solki has. He's using it for gas, but look at Light's money. 500 minerals, but 1,200 gas in the bank. That's what happens when you go eight racks, and you really just don't need a ton of gas for much. You're making science vessels two at a time, but, I mean, three refineries is kind of a lot. That's why it doesn't bother to have the refinery at this fourth base he's taking at the one o'clock position. Plego Dark Swarm combo. C -c 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 combo gonna shove light away here this has been a really good game fairly non-stop since light has arrived here about two or three minutes ago he's up 125 to 95 supply scourge nope not connecting there at all come on sulky you can babysit your scourge a little bit better than that maybe don't don't just fly them one at a time over a huge group of marines trying to jump out and jump on these marines but i mean they're still doing the damage it's not like their damage is nerfed when they get plagued they're you know some of them are pretty well injured Nice irradiate again. This is just looking like the end for Soul Key. Light is set up very nicely here. He's up about 40 supply. Defiler is getting irradiated and massacred consistently. Light science vessel play is second almost to none at this point in the world as long as Flash is gone. It's hard living up to Flash, but look at Soul Key double expanding bottom left. You can get away with that. Also getting some adrenalings into this fourth base is pretty good. SCV count falling under the Zerg's worker count right now, but only by two. Forcing a liftoff on that fourth base is a pretty big deal as well. Dark Swarm's going to be the answer to all of this. The more Dark Swarms, the better it is for you as a Zerg against someone going with the eight racks. You're so heavily dependent on Marines, and Marines with Dark Swarm, it's just their absolute nemesis. 
Fourth base gets replanted. Some units come up and clear that out. I don't even know how Soul Key got Lings up in here in the first place. What path could they have possibly taken? Maybe through the middle and then just dodged on up here because coming out this way is not going to work out for you. Nice plague again. Beautiful plague. Fire bats against ultras are not great. Marines are not great. But fire bats are even more not great. Why are you not attacking that marine? Are you on hold position? Probably. That would explain this. And Lings are just attacking this egg while a marine is... That's just bad micro too. Soul Key. Okay. He's maybe... He's maybe kind of established this thing. He's got Nidus Canal set up. Because, you know, these bottom bases need to be able to get reinforcements up to the front here. Ling's cruising out, but without any defiler support. Sure, they pick off a marine. But they're just going to get a... There's just nothing there for them at all. Nice. Oh, Scourge pick off. Light Scourge pick offs are so good. He's just got the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine racks. Because, sure, however many racks you want is good. Science vessels feel brave enough to just wander deep into creep and see what they can see. They're not worried about Scourge at this point, which seems crazy to me, but I don't know. Like, Can Light afford that many Scourge? He's only got 50 gas in the bank right now. Sure, it's continually coming in, but he doesn't have a huge bank to roll with. Just donating Ultralisks here. I don't even know where that Ultra came from. Probably down the ramp and then up here, and then bad things happen to it. But there's a big attack swinging across the south here to this bottom left-hand corner of Soul Keys. If Soul Key can hold this, he's going to be fine. If he can't hold this, that's going to be your GG. So, I don't know. Those Marines did way better than expected without any Dark Swarm support against these Marines. But there's a Sunken here. And there's no Fire Bats. And these are Adrenal Lings. So this attack is going to get absolutely rebuffed. However, the attack to the north continues to be scary. Scourge continues to not make connections at all. Free medics. I guess free medics are like free scourge. Kind of the same thing here. Dark swarming this ramp pretty much guarantees that light's not going to try to get up here. He's, I guess he does send a fire bat up the ramp with defensive matrix, no less. It does get plagued. But, okay, never mind. The dark swarm... I say Light has no interest in coming up this ramp when it's Dark Swarm. That's exactly what happens. And things go pretty badly for him. So he ends up retreating down the way here, pulling even further back than just the bottom of that ramp. More Marines heading across the middle of the map here. Maybe going to try to attack into this base. Dude, Sulky, his economy is kind of nuts right now. He's got so much gas income, he's spending it very well, too. He's spending it all the way down into the 40s here with Scourge, making five Ultras at a time, even trying to take the center. I mean, as much damage as Light's been doing up here at the 12 o'clock, I just kind of feel like Soul Key's in an okay position, a much okayer position than I expected him to be in after all that's been happening up here. And even with the Wraith opening... It's still 146 to 119 supply. Like, don't get me wrong. Light has a massive lead on overall just everything. It's army value is what it is. And just no Dark Swarm to defend up here. But against a small group of Marines, it's fine. It's when you start dealing with 20, 30, 40 Marines that the Ultras really start to have a problem. But if you want to keep sending smaller groups of 6 or 7 down, then the Ultras are totally fine with that. To radiate, again, a large part of that Ultra's death. No Dark Swarm on the ramp. Light pushing up here could be a big deal. Ling's cutting across the middle to pick off reinforcements. See what they can figure out there. Ling's Dark Swarm does show up on the ramp. The irradiates are consistent and pretty scary. Are there just no attacks at all coming to this bot? I don't know if Light can win this thing if he keeps... If he allows Soul Key to have this stuff. This is three extra bases. Light isn't able to get another base. He hasn't been able to get a fifth base at all. Is he thinking about expanding somewhere? Yeah, he's sending SCVs down here. Maybe to mine through. Where are these guys even going? They don't. They were told to go somewhere and they can't. So they're bouncing around like idiots. As Soul Key, he's look. He's down 20 supply. This is not a position where Zerg players usually win a game. But just the extra income of those bases in the bottom left are doing so much work for him. The Dark Swarms, I feel like, <laughs> are just perfectly timely. Oh yeah, okay, Light's trying to take this base, but a Dark Swarm Ling attack obliterates it. The worker count for Light is going to go sub-40 here in a minute, as soon as these Marines stop dying inside the Dark Swarm, and the Lings actually go after the SCVs, and they retreat, they lift off. 
now it's all of a sudden a lot more even than it was a minute ago. He chases this attack off. The science vessel count is huge, but they can't kill anything by themselves. Play gets tossed down on a single science vessel. That's how scrappy this game is right now. And yeah, these SCVs, long distance mining up from this top right base, hugely oversaturated, 48. And Light's tapping out? Is that what Light is saying here? Is that a GG? I don't know. He's like, how do you have so much stuff? And Sulky's like, you know how I have so much stuff. I have the whole bottom left corner of this map. It's mine. And Light says, I'm not GGing, Falcon. Shut up. I'm going to take this base. It's going to be mine. Individual Ultras do not frighten me. Especially if they're irradiated. They're so much squishier. And that's not how it works. But, you know. This is insane. I can't. This game might just get an epic tag here. I cannot believe how well Soul Key is playing here. Light. And there, Light calls the GG and Soul Key is your winner in 25 minutes and 54 seconds. Insane. How many games have I ever cast where Zerg player loses their third and has a Terran army on their front door for 20 minutes of the game? 15 minutes of the game. And the Zerg player wins. Well, how many games has a Zerg player also been able to get three bases with extractors, mind you? Make them his. Never really have too many problems with them. Defend any attacks that come down this way. That, that's the answer. That's the answer. He just, he had 3-2 upgrade adrenalings. He had fully, almost fully upgraded ultras. The science vessel count was huge. He only killed maybe three or four science vessels. They were just consistently very good. But end of the day... It was economy. I mean, if we look at resources spent here today, it's going to be sulky by a mile. But total number of units lost is hugely going to favor light. He's just killed ling after ling, ultra after ultra, irradiating and sniping defilers consistently. Scourge not making connections on science vessels because of how good light's target firing was. And I just think he expected to be able to get up this ramp. But every time it looked like it was going to happen, another Dark Swarm popped down. Another Ultra or two came through these Nidus Canals. Another swarm of ten lings or so just showed up and shoved it back and shoved it back and shoved it back. He was never able to replace this base, but by golly, he never actually needed to. That was truly amazing. That was truly a fantastic, weird, maybe a weird, fun, epic game. Light was up he was up 40 supply for a large portion of this game even past the 20 minute mark which is where a zerk player is down that much at that stage of the match it's not good for them at all really 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 bad for them but you know these extra bases just kept pumping units and you're like okay sulky doesn't have any gas at all i would say and then i look up and he's making five ultras at a time because his gas income is so heavy but he's spending it so well that doesn't look like he has a ton of gas income but he did he had a ton light had a ton of gas but when you're making pretty much nothing but marines medics and science vessels you don't have a ton of gas in your expenditures anyway hot dang i do ah uh, real quick i do want to see the upgrades on light i assume he has three three i don't know why he wouldn't have three three but i realized i didn't really check and never really saw that he had three three also remember this game started out with two port wraith do you remember that yeah, it is 3-3 three, three on the Marines. Of course it is. It's two-port Wraith today. That did pretty well. We had Ensnare. We had Restoration. We had Parasite used. Then it turned into a more traditional 8-Rax versus Ling Ultra. Uh, Ling Ultra Defiler. Which, again, pretty standard. Once again, the Irradiates were very good, too. Did I mention that? The It was very rare that you would see an Ultra list just chomping on a group of Marines. That hadn't been irradiated at some point. Yeah. And look, Light still had 48 SCVs. He just knew he was never getting this base and this one was mining out. So he saw the writing on the wall here. And yeah, these Ultras, they're not getting stuff for free here. They're taking consistent irradiate damage the entire time. The entire time they're doing anything, really. Look at that guy go down. Forty-three workers. He just knew he could not compete with these three bases that Sulky had managed to take that Light couldn't do anything about, and maybe 
Maybe he saw them too late? I don't know. When did he scout those? That would be a good question. <laughs> wow. What a great game. 189,000 points for Light. 175,000 for Soul Key. Once again, this is a very good game. Because the player that lost had like like 14. Let's see. Let's see if we can do math right here. Uh, yeah, like 14,000 points more than the player he lost to. Woof. He killed 419 Zerg units, lost 334. Killing 419 Zerg units in 25 minutes. Amazing. And he actually won the building's raised battle, too. He ended up raising 10 Zerg structures, only lost one Terran structure today. I don't even know what that was. Probably a floating factory or something like that. And then did get outspent, and this is where the key is. 58,000 and 43,000 resources. Those three bases in the bottom left did all of it. All of it. Man. Fantastic. Truly, truly good ZVT. All right, so that is going to be it for me today. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.